What's happening, baby? It's a check. I'm going up to have 4,000. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Taking the handy with me. Give me my Gucci, put jammers back, just be over. I damage that shit, distract me from. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We What's right good? back at it, y'all. We got my boy Guab Dad 4000 jumping off the porch with us today. What's yeah. up with you, bro? Man, what's happening? What's happening? Ah, man, cooling, bro. Man, Guab Dad 4000, aka the Platinum Falcon, mm -hmm. aka mm -hmm. Falcon Lopez, mm -hmm. aka the Ferragamo Falcon. Mm. <laughs> mm. How you feeling, bro? What's good with it, man? Talk to me. I'm happy you hit a lot of the Falcons. Yes, sir. A lot of people like to bounce around. Could have said another bird. I also go by the Free Band Phoenix. Huh. Um, but I like the Falcon motif. Yeah. Yeah. Word. Now I can dig it. When Did I you see the video I posted? With yeah, bro. I was tripping. Like, yeah, like the big hawk or something mm -hmm, or whatever, mm -hmm, like on your hand. Mm -hmm. I was, I was going to ask you, man, like how, how nervous was you, bro, with that bird on your arm like that? I was at peace. I was at peace. I'm like an animal whisperer, just yeah. at, but a hood nigga at the same time. So I feel like they respect the slight danger. Yeah. Like I'm ready to punch this bird in the fucking beak if he try to claw me. Yeah. But he know that I don't want to because I just want to uh, feed him the little chunks of mice flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause they say that, uh, Animals just like babies, like they got like that type of intuition where you know they can sense like good people, good yeah. energy. You know, yeah. What I mean? I, my rear is so crazy. I rear down wildlife. Huh. Mm hmm. The even even the falconer that was uh, that owned the bird yeah. was like, she just keep flying over there to you. Like yeah. this, she can't wait to get over there. I, I, I know she can't. Yeah, nah. That's how that's how you know good energy though, man. When, when animals, you know, what I'm saying gravitate. You know, man, to you. And now I was tripping, bro, because, like, uh, actually the falcon is, like, one of my favorite birds. And, like, the peregrine falcon. Mm -hmm, fastest it, one. Yeah, you what know what I mean? What is it, 268 yeah, miles an hour, I yep, believe? Yeah, yeah, and, and damn near, like, the fastest animal in the world. I mm -hmm. think, like, the cheetah, the only one faster than it. But Yeah, but that's land. Right. We talk about, you can't compare to the dive speed of this bitch, man. They, they um, the, uh, one of the military, like, jets is designed around the shape of the body of the peregrine falcon. Huh. Uh-huh. Damn. Nah, that's super ill. Yeah, that's crazy. Now, where's your infatuation with birds come from, bro? Like, how, how'd that come about? I always said, you remember the books, the animorphs? Yeah. You remember them where you, it'd be a rat turning in yeah. to a nigga, he'll look kind of like a weasel at one, and then a weird amalgamation in the middle of some sort of homunculus. I don't know. Yeah. But you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I used to look at them and just want to be a bird. Like, if I could pick an animal, yeah. it was cheetah at first. Okay. But then I'm like, nah, I think I want to be a bird. If I'm not just a lion, but I feel like because I'm a Leo, I want to pick a lion. So yeah. I often try not to say it. If I'm not a bird, a lion, I'd probably be a pistol shrimp, too. Huh. Yeah, them, like, yeah, them crazy because they, they uh -huh. like they go after they prey and they snap, make that loud noise mm -hmm. and like crack them. They got chopper underwater. Yeah, that's clean underwater chopper. Yeah, that's, that has to be a song. I mean, they they so crazy, bro. That if you keep one like in a in a tank, you can only have that one thing in the tank because anything else you put in there is gonna kill it's it. Over. It's gonna go crazy. <laughs> it's yeah. over. I like that. You just got to let him do him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Word. So animals always been like just something that you've been tapped into or? Yeah. They, I also used to draw a lot as a kid. Okay. So all the shows that used to come on the cartoon, on anything, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, where they had a nigga that would draw, I was drawing with him. Yeah. It was one who used to always go on safari and he'd draw the animals. So i draw the animals with him and just got obsessed. And I also used to read encyclopedias they had pictures of the animals in it. Yeah. And they was watercolor. I, I used to love to paint with watercolor. So yeah. it just was, I always liked animals. Yeah. And see, that, that's something that like people in this age don't really know about. Like encyclopedias, our parents yeah. having them joints at the crib and your way of getting information is opening up this book, going, you know what I mean, to a certain section, finding that information, you know what I mean? Right. And, then, and it's, it's super interesting too, to grow up as the internet was booming like that, yeah. being that part, that section of Millennial existence is funny because I watched me need them encyclopedias to right. then 
Wikipedia being a thing. Right. And then it, it was so, such a crazy thing when it hit, like our teachers had to teach us how to use it. Yeah. To be like forward thinkers. Yeah, no, nah, for know? sure. Because I remember in college when Wikipedia first came out and like everybody was doing, pa was writing their papers and yeah. shit, using that. And yeah. basically was just, you know what I mean? Just, just, just taking it word from word mm -hmm. from Wikipedia. So then they started making it where, at first, it wasn't a reliable source, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Especially because it was so new at the time, but yep. it was just crazy. How I remember they, they was getting mad when we would cite it. We would cite Wikipedia. Right, right. They would get hella mad, and I'm yeah. like... Because it's almost like, because it's almost looked at like the cheat code. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you ain't really do that much. You ain't really do research, because a bunch of other people did research and brought it here to this one place. whole time, that was just the introduction to the speed in which we would have access to information. Nah, absolutely. Now. Yeah, people weren't ready for it then though because it just seemed unreal for us to get true, truthful yeah. information, real information that fast, yeah. you know what I mean? You always had somebody like at a newspaper, you had somebody in a room that was a, uh, you know, like checking, you know, source checking and mm -hmm. making sure something was accurate before it actually got published. So this was like published in real time by the people. Yeah. This was also like one of the first introductions to I think like kind of like user generated content to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily like user generated content like videos, but where users are able to, you know what I mean? Like control the content the that's going out of, there. Uh, yeah, and publish whatever it. Whatever information is being yeah, published. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, for sure. Yeah. No, nah, but that's what's up, bro. So, so man, from Oakland, bro. Yeah, Oakland, California, baby. Yeah. One and, of the greatest. And what was that like, bro? Like, what was, you know, growing up in Oakland like for you, bro? For me, I had an interesting experience because I'm from West Oakland. Like, it was, especially when I was growing up, it was the grimier side of Oakland. Yeah. West Oakland was dirty. That's how people thought of it. Um, but I never looked at it that way. I always was the weird kid that was just in the middle of the hood. So I loved our architectures, beautiful Victorian homes. We got trees that the rest of Oakland don't got. It's a marsh in the back that is the land connecting to the Bay Bridge. Yeah. It's like a private reserve park back there. It's, we got indigenous plants and Indian cultures that came from o up over there. Mm. All our parks is beautiful to me. I used to climb the trees. I got my first splinters on the trees. Yeah. In West Oakland, you know what I'm saying? I always seen the beauty in it. Hmm. And I liked graffiti. So I, I liked all the art and shit. Yeah. And we got some legendary graffiti artists who did some, then dropped off some shit. So uh, I fucked with it. Yeah. And Oakland, you know, even though, you know, from the, like the way that people display how Oakland is, you know, you you just hear about like the the rough parts and yeah. you know what I mean, like the tough yeah. part about Oakland. But how you just explain like there's so much art, there's so much culture, you know, there and and, and it's it's a diverse culture too. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, we a culture we a culture heavy city. It's a gumbo pot of ethnicities. Yeah. Is what makes up my hometown. I love it though. I do quite enjoy jumping into a portal and experiencing like a whole another world. And I, I, by jumping into a portal, I mean just like as a kid walking into the Cambodian homie's house. Mm. We've been slap boxing in the park all day. Yeah. Now it's time to kick it and shit, go watch BT and shit. Walking into his house, they only making pure Cambodian shit. It's the yeah. smells, it's the aunties, but you feel me? We all got the same underlying taste in arts. Right. That's what's like one of the common denominators of the Bay Area people, like, it don't matter what race. I'm black, Filipino, straight Filipino nigga, Chinese, Vietnamese, hella Mexicans. Yeah. Um, anybody, we all probably listen to a couple of the same songs, if not quite a few. Mm. We say the same words when we mad or excited. Yeah. And we all dance a similar way. You ever meet anybody from the Bay and just put on music that they might enjoy? We all will dance in the car the same way yeah it's a little groove a bop that you're gonna get from us yeah unfortunately the word only seed like the crazy one when during the hyphen movement right, that's what we right. get associated with now but that was like a, a a boisterous party out extension of just our natural groove right right yeah but um especially with the like I was telling my Lyft driver here 
she, she wanted to go to the Bay because she didn't like the food in L.A., but she did eat a lot at a lot of touristy spots okay. because a lot of people who say L.A. don't got good food, they just lying. There's some good food out there, but yeah. you, you got to get to it. And nah, you, got you can't it. have a foodie day in L.A. like that, like that, because traffic's so bad. Right. You got to pick two spots to eat at, my nigga. Right, straight up. And I'm talking about breakfast and dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Lunch, you got to <laughs> just get wherever that's close to you. Right. You know, um, but I was telling her, when you go to the Bay, it, it's very violent right now. It's sick. It's sick back home. It's sick in my city. In yeah. the town, it's sick yeah. right now. What's one of your favorite parts about being from the Bay? Because people from the Bay have a lot of pride about, you know what I'm saying, being from, from that area. Mm -hmm. People from the Bay is the same thing as biracial people and um, like the version how light-skinned people keep their eyes open hella wide so you can see their eyes a different color. That's how much people from the Bay say they from the Bay. Yeah. I picked the longest explanation just to say Bay Area a couple more times in that last sentence, I swear <laughs> to God. Just, just to let I love saying, our sense of, because we, we got sauce, bro. Yeah. When you got sauce in, when you drizzle in, in, the, in the cloth that wrapped around all the vintage pimps, but it's not direct pimping, it's just the spirit of a pimp. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, uh, embedded in everybody. Yeah. Even some of the white niggas. I'm uh, telling you. you like, say the everybody is, the, from the, back. The ism, the ism is, is in so a little strong. Bit of it's a torrent. Yeah. It's a it's a wave of uh morality of disgust for certain things. Yeah. Uh of uh interpersonal relationship. Huh. So truly and, in you not on you, like just like a way of life mm -hmm, to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that without saying it. Yeah, no, I could do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that that's how it is when you wrapped in the game. Uh, that's why Bay Area bitches is so dangerous. Hmm. Bay Area, they, you, you, you get set up. <laughs> I mean, they dangerous more than the setup. Yeah. They either going to be your favorite bitch. You know how uh. many rappers I know who the pulled up an Instagram of a bitch that I grew up with and she just could get anything from this nigga. Yeah. They dangerous in a lot of ways. And cause our culture's so blended, you might catch a crazy mixed one. You might catch a beautiful black, yeah. thick, just sugar. We got sugar foots too. Mm. Atlanta be having some sugar foots, but y'all got ass out here. Ours, break you know down, break, break down what a sugar foot you is. You don't know what a sugar foot is? Nah. It's when, the, it's when the bitch is just that cute. Like, you know, I hate to use the word cute because it sounds juvenile, especially in this, the time that we in. I don't even want no relation in attraction to adolescence. But when a bitch, no makeup, just got that face. Uh, you look at her hands, it's just pretty. Yeah, you look at her yeah. toes, it's just pretty. The ankle bracelet on her is pretty. The yeah. arch in her foot is pretty. I don't even like feet like that. Huh. But you got to acknowledge yeah, for sure. when the bitch is a sugar foot. Yeah. She's stepping in honey. Huh. It's agave with a bitch walk. Well, That's do. a sugar foot. Yeah, okay, okay. So we be having some sugar foot. Yeah. We got some legendary sugar foot. I just seen a lot of people in entertainment down bad over our sugar foot. <laughs> I was disappointed in them. Yeah, they even crashed out over a sugar foot. Right. Uh. But I, I get it. I get it. They sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so man, like what? Shit. So man, like going back into you know you you growing up, man. Like, uh, what type of cat were you growing up? Like, were you into the arts early? Were you in the sports? Like, what? yeah, I was not in the sports at all, brother. All that sports shit niggas be talking about. Yeah. I'm really only starting to catch up now because uh, I, I forgot who was. I think it was my manager that like bust me out because I may have repeated a, a, a dumb sounding sports question and it mm. kind of probably irritated this nigga, triggered him. So he was like, oh, yeah. you be playing dumb about sports or something he said, but ADHD, brother, I forgot that I even asked that shit. No, no, no. But the right. nigga, uh, so now because of that, I be trying to be more cognitive and know and remember names. But like, I really don't care about none of that shit. Yeah. I like watch when they do God level shit, like when it's only some NBA shit, like yeah. Steph Curry. When this, you know what I'm saying, nigga like that, Kevin Durant do some magical ass shit from over there. I'm like, oh wow. Yeah. That's a human feat that I'm incapable of, that's tight. But the rest of the game, yeah. I really don't care for it at all. 
I think I like football the most if I could pick a sport yeah. to watch just because it's kind of violent or hockey because yeah. niggas can punch each other and that's cool. Badminton gets really intense as well. Hmm. You ever watch a badminton mm-hmm. match? Yeah, that's From really Table intense. tennis, that, that get table crazy. Tennis, they, they go yeah, crazy on yeah. that. They go crazy. Yeah. But I like playing table tennis, so I don't really like to watch this shit because mm-hmm. they better than I ever am going to take the time to try to be. I like watching pool matches too. Mm. Pool matches. If chess was a sport, I like watching chess. Oh, man. yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I feel like chess is a sport. It should be. Definitely a mental sport. Definitely mental jousting. Yeah, you know I mean? definitely. Yeah. If, is jousting still a thing? Or oh, that's fencing, huh? Yeah. Jousting is fencing. Jousting and fencing, same thing. Well, not really, though, because I feel like. Jousting was on a horse. Yeah, I feel like it's. So I'm thinking about what, that, what would be the, the modern day equivalent? See, the joust I'm thinking about is on a, when they was on American Gladiators up on the platform and they was hitting each other with the. Uh, See, my American joint. Gladiator game is not that um, prevalent, brother. So yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. About. Well, shit, now that's all to the good. <laughs> 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 I'm mad at you, though. Yo, so, mad. so. But yeah, oh, I, I didn't grow up doing sports. The type yeah. of kid I was in the hood. My mama and daddy, um, both from West Oakland, really respected people. And all my daddy, as a nigga who was getting money, all my uncles and my daddy's side of the family, the Hayes side of the family, them niggas get their money and do their things, and have bitches, yeah. and do do the thing. Um, that was my pops and who raised me. And my grandma was a super radical, uh, beautiful lady, beautiful yeah. lady. She uh, had crash out stages. She was a Black Panther. She a healer, a herbalist. She still do work in the community to this day. Yeah. Um, she also did hard drugs before, so like, that I, I'm from the hood. It's just a, a, a mix of that. My mama was the only, her and my, my aunties was the only mixed bitches in the West. They the only black Filipino ones. They fine, they pretty, they fighting everybody. And I don't like to tell their story because you let the internet colorists say it. it it's like people was not trying to fight other black girls because they was light skinned. Hmm. But like all I heard was my mama had me when she was 13. Okay. So like, we're hella close. Yeah. You know, my pops was only two, three years older. It was like that. Yeah. Hood, real hood baby shit. All that shit was like a mix of what got poured into me at the same time, growing up hella Filipino in the church. My grandma, a Catholic nun. Hmm. So I was, <laughs> leaving the hood, going to San Jose and like being an altar boy, mm-hmm. playing video games, watching anime, drawing Dragon Ball Z. But like niggas know I'll get off the porch and fight. Yeah. So we, I was doing hot shit too. Like when white people started moving in, we, we was robbing them, especially cause we needed it. Like we sharing spaghetti meat, trying to figure out how to cook it mm. in the microwave. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck we was doing, but we was broke, broke. Yeah. Like cinnamon what, on butter on bread, mm, bro. Mm. That's I French remember, toast. I remember, I remember them sugar, <laughs> I remember them sugar sandwiches. Nigga, put, I'm talking about- Put them about, joints in the toaster I'm oven. I'm talking about me and, my, me and my little brother Chance used to melt cheese. My, Vaughn used to put sugar on rice. That was his lick. Yeah. I, I liked it that one. Yeah. I liked yeah. it that one. But imagine, you so broke a, a quick snack for you is to just melt cheese in the microwave, but it's from the dollar store and it don't melt. Mm. Yeah. You know? I remember that kind of <laughs> cheese because look, look, we used to get the government cheese, the government butter. You get like that big old block of cheese. Yeah. Big thing, big See, tub they of peanut us, butter. Nigga, we, you they, know what I mean? It turns out a hell of that cheese didn't melt. Nah, nah, that cheese for sure didn't melt. <laughs> uh-uh. and, and you had to have like a big old butcher knife to even cut a slice mm-hmm. off of that block. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, it was yeah. another level. Now, what age would you say you jumped off the porch? I jumped off the porch. I don't know if I had to classify jumping off the porch because leaving the house, I'm from, I'm from that era though, where yeah. like the street lights is a designated time to do something so. and if you out after that it's a specific time to, to do something else yeah 
you know? And the, some of my times when I was jumping off the porch was after the lights came on. Mm. So I think the first time where I was allowing that mindset in my life to like, it's fun to do bad shit, maybe 11. Hmm. I lived across the street from the Acorn Projects. Mm. So all, whatever niggas could Google about all of them niggas for the last 30 years, yeah. I know about it. And I grew up with some of the originals. All, most of the niggas who was my friends that ended up being the street niggas that was catching bodies yeah. is dead. I could cross my kindergarten picture off like this. Yeah. And, and, and at this time when you growing up, like, I mean, Too Short and E-40 are like all, damn near at their peak. Um, what, Mac Dre is, you know what I'm saying? Like doing his thing in the Bay. Like it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of motion, a lot of. Mac Dre a, died early on into my like obsession with the music. Yeah. But um, rest in peace to the great. Nah, for sure. Um, but 40 and short, for sure. They was already legends by right, the time right. I was a young nigga. Like, yeah. they was already the big bros. But they was, for us, it was like a rejuvenation. It was like an even greater respect for them. If you listen to anything from E-40 back then around my ghetto report card, mm -hmm. he was calling it his second wind. Yeah. He already had a first wind great enough to where he was cemented. Right. That was like, he was saying that. And I forever remember that, too. Um, so to us, it was just like a stamp. We yeah. had a lot of other niggas that was coming up around then that was doing their thing. Yeah. So it was like a, it really was a movement. Yeah. It really was. Word, word. And bro, when did you, when did you get into music or when did you even really tap into doing like, you know, being, being a creative? Cause bro, I remember, like I was introduced to you from Vine. Like I remember, <laughs> Nigga, I re you see me on Vine. Yeah, bro. I remember you in the Vine days. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like chilling in the Versace robe. You know what I'm saying? Talk, just just talking hella shit. You know what I'm saying? Like kicking game. You know what I mean? And just you know what I mean? Just just just, just putting that personality out there and everything. Just going hard with it. Um, but you know, at what point did you know that you wanted to just be a creative? Because did music come first, or you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean. In terms of my professional career with anything, music came first. I was so internet famous. I never, personally, I'm one of the most internet famous niggas ever in yeah. all of California. Yeah. And California controls the West Coast, so on the whole West Coast, yeah. I'm one of the most internet famous niggas ever. Yeah. And this has been the truth since MySpace. Yeah, because I remember, I mean, you were in videos with some of the other people who mm -hmm. are some of the most famous mm -hmm. internet people, King Batch and, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, different people. I remember, you know, seeing you with some of those other Vine stars, you know, from back then. Yeah, it was, um, those people just happened to be from the Bay. And people didn't know back then where anybody was really from, especially back then. When I started blowing up on Tumblr, mm. everybody thought I was in New York. Mm. Niggas think I went to school with um, Ian Connor and them. And yeah. I swear to God, I got damn near got hella love from that wave, yeah. from them blowing up just because I was popular on Tumblr at the same time. Mm. Um, Tumblr was an ill niche community too, man, that like you have to be skilled to like really tap into that community. A lot of the but, bitches I fucked on Tumblr became some of the bad OnlyFans bitches today. Uh, that was legendary. I'm like a bad bitch A&R. <laughs> For real. I flew some bitches out to LA in my first days when I like I, I moved to LA so internet viral, brother. So viral that it, everything was just good. And I was still scamming at that time. Yeah. So niggas was punching for flights and doing the hug. I was doing the fool, cause this was the early days. Yeah. I had access to do the fool. Mm -hmm. And boy, was I doing it. Huh. It's some bitches I flew to LA that still live there. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking wow. about they never left, <laughs> never went back home, never picked up old belongings, yeah. did that shit years later. You can change some lives out here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> Couple rappers be having them in their little caravans. Yeah. I be seeing them. I don't say nothing. Huh. 
you just you just mentioned the scamming, but uh, can you speak to just how you was getting it out the mud, you know, before you did get internet famous, before you did, you know, have a duffel bag yeah. of hundreds of white do uh, yeah. rags? See, the problem is, I was like on Vine and Tumblr while I started scamming. And then that's what took me away from the internet because, you know, if this shit wasn't even spread out enough for me not to feel like the feds would ever see this, I wouldn't even say it in this interview, brother. I was real careful with how, what I did with anything. And it took me to a lot of spots. Hmm. It took me to a lot of places. So. I couldn't be on the internet at that time. Yeah. You know, that affected me. And my my family was seeing it and I was going through a breakup. Ooh wee, hmm. and I love this little bitch too. And I, anytime I get a girlfriend, that be my real bitch. Like I'm ready to go crazy for the bitch. Yeah. And just like flourish because I know I got hoes. So if I focus on one, Bitch, I hella like you. Yeah, yeah. Hella. So, to lose that bitch, and this was like my first actual girlfriend after just being born with bitches. Mm. Oh, I was hurt. I'm like, nigga, in elementary school, girls used to come knock on the door, walk me to school, like, give me their lunch. Yeah. I'm talking about bitches that give me their spork. I don't want to say bitches because we was kids. Girls would give me they spork, hmm. they napkin, the icy on triangle deck. Yeah. Well, you got the red ones. I had four, five, six red ones, P. So you was born I a P. Pyramid. So you was born a P. It was just, 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 I was you, born. just natural. So if I really lock in, and I like locking in because I like to challenge my own mind. I like to know I'm capable of things. When I really started liking her. I told her out loud, like, I want to see if I could be faithful just to, because I want to see if I could do it. Yeah. I think I like you that much. I want to try that. Huh. Just to see, like, huh. as a man, what can I do? Don't it seem like whenever you, like, try to, like, change it up, try to do good, try to, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, man, man not, same, now you going <laughs> to fuck over me? Like, damn. At the same man. time, I've been like that, right? But every time when I truly felt like that, it was accountability hmm. six months to a year in front of it. Yeah. With dealing with women. Like, they decision making, when you hurt a woman, they decision making hit you so much later. Yeah. Because they've been to toiling over that shit forever. And you do one thing that remind them or they get triggered. They trigger themselves, fuck around with a woman. Yeah. But. Seriously, every time I for real thought like that as a man, I set it up that way hmm. with the bitch. Yeah. I did it on some real P shit, P. Hmm. If we, not even P shit, bro. If we talking just <laughs> human interaction and yeah. hurt feelings, nigga, I set it up that way hmm. because however we started, I know I was on my shit. Yeah. And I know what I was doing. I always decide later on to get my shit together. I don't never want to get it together. It got to be my program at the front of it so I can feel comfortable to break whatever habits or cut off whatever hoes I'm dealing with. Yeah. And then as soon as I get it together, the bitch is over it. Yeah. Every time. It seems if she like go past that, then we end up rocking, but that still be on her heart. Like, if you don't give a enough space and communication for whatever could fester in their heart and grow into poison that would then make toxicity in a relationship, you're fucked, brother. Because once that hit her, you got to, the accountability going to feel late to you. Yeah. Then you don't want to, you're going to oppose it because it's so old and you may actually be genuinely over it. But a nigga like me, ready to rock back normal as soon as I apologize. Yeah, right, right, right. Ready to be <laughs> like, know, all right. You know, I'm ready to get reset as soon as I apologize. Yeah. So, for real, for real, that was, um, that, that was my experience with that it, and accountability. Like, I don't want to, a, a, a bitch can't just do you wrong. Yeah. It has happened in different minor situations. 
But in terms of where my feelings was for real hurt, like the shit I could remember with as much as I forget daily. Yeah. It was my fault. Wow. It wasn't my fault when they decided to fuck up. Yeah. But it's for some shit that was for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you get uh, do you get frustrated when some people may recognize you more like as a personality or consider you a comedian? More Boy, than, I used to. More than your music? I used to. I used to. I only wanted to be a rapper. Yeah. I'm talking about up until maybe four, six, seven months ago. Wow. This is a recent realization for Guap, baby. Yeah. Because I used to only want to be a rapper. I'm just funny. People, I be pouring my heart out, ranting, saying about something that actually I feel is passionate and they think is hilarious. Hmm. And I can't help it. My charisma is that strong, though. It just pour into the seriousness. I'm the nigga, and, and it's unfortunate because people like that. But they don't know that that's only because I didn't spoke at so many funerals. Hmm. You feel me? So like, I, th that's the inside knowledge that I have to intake while still dealing with the outside world. And unfortunately, my filter was not thick enough for that not to hurt my feelings once it passed through. Yeah. So I tried not to be offended later on after I, I stopped getting mad from it, but it was still a thing that felt like a chip on my shoulder. Yeah. And I know these niggas, so when I, when I say names in comparison, it's not out of disrespect, but it, a lot of people took different routes in the era of virality that I came up in. Mm. A lot of funny niggas linked into the funny shit so much because they wanted that M mm -hmm. on that follower that they did it. After my first 150,000, 200,000, three, then I, sta I start staggering, then it spiked up. A I'm like, damn, hold on. Cause I'm in LA already. These mm. niggas is all, remember I told you, on, you don't know where nobody at. Yeah. I'm in LA, it's easy for me to just integrate into sessions and shit like that. Yeah. Um, so I'm feeling the chip on my shoulder already. I took that and got scared. Hmm. I got ooped. Me and my manager talked about it. It was like, yeah. what do you want to be looked at as? You could be this, you could be that. I wanted to be everything. Hmm. And it's funny because my business model is to be everything. But um, back then, I, I didn't even have a, a section of what everything was. Yeah. And, so, and sometimes, sometimes we need, we be just needing to go back and look at like the foundation or the basics of what we doing to yes. give us the answers. Yes. You know what I mean? Exactly. All right. Exactly. And it's funny you talk about foundations because that feeling of when I first started and was going through the motions, like going viral, trying to not be um, other people who were making videos at that time. Mm -hmm. It was weighing heavy on me. So it's rolled over literally up until almost recently. Yeah. I shot a movie. I'm in the next uh, Jordan Peele produced film. Okay, word. It's called him. Look, I almost the, the pulled one, the mic out of nigga pocket. The, Goddamn. The one with Marlon Wayne, <laughs> the one starring Marlon Wayne. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Um, we football players. That's all. That's about all I could say. Okay. Um, I ain't trying to fuck my back up, Pete. <laughs> Real spill. <laughs> um, but after that, I was able to improv a scene so crazy, so many times. People clapped when I was done on, on the last take. And the word that I had to improv on was him. When I got home, they turned the name of that movie to him. Wow. So they changed the name of this movie because of me. Yeah. But it's a Monkey Paw production, which is Jordan Peele's um, production company. All of his team is super tight. Everybody over there, hella talented yeah. and hella cool. I played Street fight, Fighter with this nigga Jamal for hours. Huh. We ate Chipotle and played Street Fighter yeah. for hours. And he was actually running me. We going back and forth. I'm, nigga, I'm Asian. I'm hella good at fighting games. <laughs> and you know, Street Fighter in Tekken specifically for black people yeah. is hella good. So yeah, I got sure. like double of the power on Street Fighter. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Nigga, 
this nigga will beat me. <laughs> so I was having a blast. Like that's the type of people that's working on the movie. Yeah. Marlon Wayne's hella cool. I took one shot with a nigga, a fan that had seen me and he smelt it on me. He right. like cracked a joke, but then looked at me and he was like, yeah, smell the liquor too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that, <laughs> that was awesome. my first, I said, damn, awesome, Marlon Wayne. Awesome, awesome OG yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, cause we young niggas on the yeah, set and yeah. he felt my energy yeah. like, oh, okay, let me, let me let this nigga know. But I, he so funny. I'm mad that I missed the party that he threw cause he was finna, uh, he was finna throw it a couple of days after I was leaving set for yeah. that time. Cause I'm on and off finishing my album, so I'm back and forth. Um, but that shit was crazy. They named the movie after me. Wow. And that changed my whole perspective huh. on comedy. I got to bring it back to the original point. Ooh, ADHD yeah. be killing but, me on these long ass interviews. Nah, but you. But I, I, it, I hated the word comedian. Hmm. I did not want people to tell me I could be a comedian. I did not want people to tell me I could do stand up. Yeah. I did not want people to tell me I could be Vince Staples. I did not want people to tell me I could be Zach Fox. Mm. I didn't want to do anything funny. I was just by accident funny. And I'm not realizing what I'm thinking is just like cool to do is goofy to some people. Hmm. Like I'm really removed a lot more than people think f from their opinion of why I do what I do. Mm. I feel like that's why they get the real, but at the same time, it's like art, you know, everything is relative. Yeah. So to be a comedian, oh, I hate it. I didn't want to be. And also I was battling depression before I knew it, it was a symptom of ADHD. Nigga, I'm taking antidepressants and that shit fucking me up. I'm not even supposed to be on that shit. And I, I oh, as a, nick, as a hood nigga, I didn't even want to accept, I had it. Yeah. So to do that, go off nigga come from suicide attempts and then i know cognitively as an intelligent and who loves the art of comedy that depression and comedians be some of the saddest people in the fucking for sure. world for sure everybody kind of knows that one for sure. i didn't want it, that to be true about myself yeah so when the fans were saying that about me that triggered me mm. And that also stopped a lot of motion. Like we didn't, I said no to hella bags. That could have changed some shit. Wow. Just cause I didn't want to be funny. Yeah, yeah. You didn't want that to be I, what people exactly. knew you for or, what, or the basis of what people recognized you for. At the end of the day, a nigga just want to be taken serious. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about how goofy, how funny it is for anybody how cool it is for anybody, how first it was. Yeah. I'm often first, I, that's accidental most of the time. Yeah. That's, that's the crown that I wear, but I, I just want it to be serious. That's my curse. But look, I'm gonna use one of the uh, therapy buzzwords, imposter syndrome, you know what I'm saying? Like where you skilled in so many different areas and it seems like since your goal was to be a rapper, then it seemed like these other accomplishments that were coming in, 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 your, in, in your favor before the goal of being a rapper, then you, yeah. seem, you, you felt like you failed mm -hmm. this and like you were abandoned in this yeah. type shit and then want to be recognized as just a comedian when you like, nah, bro, I do music. I'm a creative like right. all the way around. I wanted to, especially like out of the dream because I'm from the, I'm an internet baby. I'm like the last, blog era part millennial that um absorbed that yeah you know i was fully aware of big sean's story mm. when he rapped for yay like mm. i felt like that could have been me Word. when yay put travis scott on i felt like man deep down that could have been me when niggas certain niggas from florida was getting on like i was so close to that and i never was jealous of those dudes no, I was jealous, but I was not envious. Got you. Did not Got grow you. into envy. Yeah. That, to even reminisce on that, is out of jealousy still because of how I remember I felt. Mm. Now I'm happy my timing was my timing. You right, know? right. I'm, I celebrate it. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, nigga, I before this interview, I'm feeling good. Yeah, hey, yeah. I got 250 white do rags. Hey, we talk on, about man. that later. Bro. Yeah, nah, for sure. Right, you know what I'm saying? Some. Like, I'm drinking yeah. Hennessy. But back then, it, it, that shit was it affected me. So when I came up and 
I, I wanted it. I wanted my journey to be a, such a cool, like textbook rap journey. Right. Yeah. You yeah, know, I wanted yeah. to be like, man, because I do come from wherever Jada Kiss and them was talking about. Right. I'm from the West Oakland version. Of <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, as nerdy as the RZA get with Kung Fu, I'm from the West Oakland version. Right. Of that. Right. As in deep as uh, any producer can get, I watched the Bay Area producers get that deep. Yeah. But the rest of the world not understand how the sound go. Huh. But I, it's still that type of depth. Yeah. Them niggas is still digging in crates, like Alchemist in them. I watched that. I was grew up on it. Yeah. So I wanted that for me, badly. Yeah. It took me years to accept that that just is not how it went. Huh. Yeah. That that a lot of times <laughs> getting to our goals is not that straight line mm -hmm. that we expect it to be. Mm -hmm. It's turns, it's loops, it's you know what I mean. You might go backwards for a minute and then have to turn on another street. Is is you know what I mean? So many different ways down a road to get to success. Yeah. Um, you uh you you were featured on that Dreamville, uh, Revenge of the Dreamers three project. And like that created a lot of chatter for you. I mean, a lot of people thought you assigned to Dreamville, uh, you know, at the time. Um, can you just talk about like how you even connected like yeah. with all of them and, and, and how that happened? Before we do that, and you can keep this in the video, I don't care. But ADSG has been tearing me so, up so much. My legs are so restless. Look at that arm. Do I still look handsome on camera? Do it look cool? Do I still look cool? You don't got to answer handsome. Do I look cool? Bruh, because I'm just like touching shit. I'm, you good, bro. I didn't switch hey, hands. You, you at home, bro. Make <laughs> yourself at home, dog. You know what I mean? Shit. I'm so happy you asked me about that because it connects completely into what we're talking about. I meet a lot of people. And um, when I got cool with Drake, speaking of ADHD, I was zoned out just responding to stories. I had a thing like, I need to talk to 30 people in their story. I need to respond to 50 DMs. Mm. I need to at least comment five times and ask people, hey, put, post this on your story, P. Oh no, back then it was uh, tag your partner mm. yeah. before the story was a thing. Yeah. I was about engagement. So I'm just talking to people's stories. This nigga Drake posted some OVO chains. One of them was pink and I was just like, man, if I was signing the OVO, I want the pink one. Mm. Would I sign the OVO? Hell no. But I like the pink chain. It was clean. It was a clean kit. Yeah. You know, I, I like Cameron. So, rap pink with rappers. Yeah. Frank Ocean, Pink Matter, Andre 2000, World Pink, CeeLo Green, yeah. Prince. These are the type of niggas I fuck with. Prince wore purple. I I can't think of a fit with Prince and Pink, but he relates to the, the yeah. to the latter. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's in that, <laughs> it's in that Hugh family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Anyway, hold on. What was we talking about? You made me forget. Um, Dreamville. We were talking about the Dreamville, Dreamville. project. You yeah. see, it be terrible, bruh. <laughs> I, I often, when I'm speaking, have to think of where I need to land and I forgot it because I started getting so nostalgic. Huh. But a lot of my interactions with rappers be about funny things or random things. I just slid in Drake's DMs and didn't realize I was talking to Drake. Hmm. He really responded to me. And he said, you remind me, you ever see the documentary on Netflix, Wild Wild Country? It's about a cult leader from India. Oh, he was so saucy. He had Rolls Royces, he was hopping out, nigga Rolls, furs. He was clean, he built a whole um, city that was acknowledged in Oregon or somewhere up northwest. I can't remember where at. And he said, you remind me of him. Me and my brother just watched that documentary literally a couple days before Drake said that to huh. me. And we identified with the nigga. I'm yeah. like, you know, he got to fuck all the bitches. He was that nigga. He spit an actual game. Like, I, some of his clips still go viral to this day. I'm him. People don't realize how powerful charisma is. Huh. That's why Trump is the president. Oh yeah, for sure. I remember they tried to cancel me on Twitter because I said Trump is a pimp. And because white people only think of things in terms of Google searches, 
you if you Google pimp, you think of this goofy guy right, who like right. beats up bitches with like the jacket and a coat and a cup and a hat. But that's not what pimping is. Pimping is charisma yeah, and the manipulation real. of such. That's real. I happen to be born with a lot of it. Yeah. And in the hood, so I learned how to manipulate. Pimping and is from not- a pimp origin. That's why as an Oakland nigga, I get along with Chicago, Detroit, yeah. Houston. Yeah. Random niggas in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, anybody who's rooted in pimping, uh, we gonna have something in common. We gonna say one joke and then the nigga gonna be like, man, I can't fuck with this nigga. Yeah. You know how it go. Yeah, real story. So I'm, I'm like, uh, I had that as, as a, an asset that I, I was manipulating. That's how tr- Trump manipulates the Republican Party. Hmm. He pimping them. Yeah. And now he didn't even pimped all the niggas. The Democrats, everybody, he didn't pimp so hard. everybody. Yeah. Oh my God. Let me go back to yeah, what I'm yeah, talking for real, about and we- then bring Trump <laughs> up again. Yeah. Because I have something to say, especially right. because this is a clip based thing and I would love to give you my take on Trump. I bet. And I, you and, know I, what I'm and, and I and I got something around that too yeah, that I wanted to talk yeah, to you about too. Yeah, but back yeah. to what I'm saying. So um that led to my relationship with Drake and I couldn't believe it. Because of my relation, Drake was just friends with me and commenting on shit. This is at the time where Drake feature is still like more than solid gold, it's oh, diamond. Yeah. It's like life changing. You could call your mama, <laughs> you know? Yeah. He never sent me the verse back, none of them. Yeah. I was supposed to be on Scorpion that couldn't happen because the timing. I don't know if it was actually the timing or if what I did was weak or if that's even insecurity looking back on it. Mm. But I, I don't dwell on it. Yeah. We wasted like nine months of my career waiting on if Drake was about to rap on a song called I Need Bands that I had did. Mm. I couldn't clear it. I love LL Cool J. I don't. Uh, LL Cool J, if you see this, I love you. Huh. I wish I would have cleared that. If you ever watched me do it live, I think you would feel the spirit of it. Hey, LL him back too. out here too, like dropping I know, music and back now, out in the mix. I like, feel yeah. like I, he, I wish he would have been in that mode when I needed that clear because we could have did more with that song. Yeah. Because that's what I was pulling up to Drake parties and niggas spinning it. They playing it. Hmm. He owned it. Yeah. I never got that, but I lied to everybody and said I, I had it. That's how I got Chance the Rapper. Mm. He, he, that was the first question he asked. He was like, I tweeted. I was scamming niggas for features. My thing was I was in the scam boy. I'm one of the first pub, in public scam rappers, one of the forefathers of the genre, yeah. regardless of what nobody else got to say, because I was actually in it. And I got niggas in every state. Yeah. Who would, if you really know me, hmm. you feel me? I was, I thought I was risking it, and I never even rapped a method. Hmm. I was so scared. These it was niggas that came out rapping methods, and I was like, "Y'all crucify me." Yeah. And I never even put out a tweet like, "Oh shit," but that did. That was another dagger. Anyway, I had all that shit on my heart, and I met J. Cole. Mm. Now the back, see, that is he. I had all that shit on my heart, and I met J. Cole. It was at the Nice Guy. I had my pops with me. Mm. We just left Drake party at Delilah's. Huh. And Drake said, everybody going to the Nice Guy. We pulled up to the Nice Guy. Drake said he wasn't going in. Mm. Then I get a text from another number that said, yo, Bill pay. Turn it up at the um, bar and uh, buy any food you want. Kitchen finna close though. So I was like, bet. I go into the nice guy and I'm with my pops. My father's day, he celebrates on New Year's. It's later on okay. in January, but he celebrates it on New Year's. Okay. And as an, as a, especially as an ADHD kid, nigga, I don't know when the fuck my parents was born. I used to just say happy birthday that day as a kid because we yeah. didn't have to buy gifts yet. Right. Especially being broke, it's like they didn't expect to right, right. maybe paint a, pick a flower for my mama right. on the way home type yeah. shit. You feel me? I draw, so I, I did art and shit. 
back back for gifts. But um, I got my pops with me. He drunk as fuck. This nigga sleep in the booth next to J. Cole, Ebe, hella other niggas, some other niggas from Drake and them camp. Yeah. It's like a little, they having a little industry powwow right here. Yeah. I'm walking past, finna go to the bar to get my daddy some water. Cause my daddy was just at Delilah's and I told Drake it was my daddy's birthday. Oh, and man. he said, man, get whatever you want. My pops, <laughs> also West Oakland shit, walks around the bar. I'm talking Kevin Durant, uh, LeBron in there. I had tried to post a story and Chubbs hit me like, hey, get that off. Mm. He said, look at it. The bartender right next to LeBron. Somebody could misconstrue that, and that's gonna come from you? Yeah. He didn't explain that. He just said the bartender next to LeBron and the bartender bad. I mean, you think about it, the way that you stay yeah, around and those cause, exclusive cause circles. I live is, in a gray area. Yeah. My fame is in the gray area. Right, I right. exist in the gray matter of Hollywood. Yeah. I never had a hit record, but everybody loved me, because as soon as you meet me, you can't deny that yeah. I'm cool. Why wouldn't they want me to ha have me in the Hollywood parties just pay for all these Jewish people right. who just want to be cool? Nigga, I just keep it pee. So as soon as he said that, I seen, mind you, LeBron been on business. This nigga ain't looked up from his phone the whole time. Hmm. I would have cried if that shit would have made it on TMZ <laughs> and it was because of me. Right. And just because the bartender bad. But that's what it looked like. Yeah. I delete that, my pops go around and walk over the bar. He grab a bottle of Louis the 13th out the mahogany box. Drake, look at the nigga, put his thumbs up. <laughs> Boy, pop, you Pay have for. pops outside. It's my daddy birthday. <laughs> he going up. So by the time we get to Delilah's, me and him have personally, we gave shots to homeless niggas. Like yeah. we didn't give a fuck. Louis the 13th nigga, everybody got it. Yeah. We meet J. Cole. I don't even notice that that's J. Cole at the table. And to be at this time, I'm not even the biggest J. Cole fan. Mm -hmm. And I told Cole this, I didn't even fuck with y'all until you fucked with me and mm -hmm. knew about me. Cause I walked past the table and Cole stopped me. He said, hey, you, um, you, uh, he was like trying to say guap, but yeah. couldn't really remember it. And then the nigga, Next to him that was next to Eve said, that's Guap Dad 4000, that's the funny nigga. I was already irritated. Mind you, I'm on some drunk West Oakland yeah. shit. I'm trying to get my daddy some water. I'm ready to crash out. I'm finna go bad. Mm. Like, what you mean funny? Funny, fun, funny in what way? Hmm. Like, what, <laughs> well, like, like, explain to me what funny mean to you. Yeah. So then I, I could pick the correct reaction because a lot of these is, ain't finna be pleasant. Yeah, it's, so, cra it's crazy how our insecurities can plague exactly. us, bro. And as a nigga who's not commonly insecure, I don't like feeling that way. Mm. It makes me uncomfortable because I, I be too meta in my own head. I know when it's insecurity. Yeah. And that is a foreign thing yeah. to me. Yeah. I'm removed from insecurity nah, a that's lot. that's what's up, yeah. A lot. So I'm feeling weird. I'm confrontational. And Cole say, no, go up that 4,000. You just posted a freestyle in the car. I watched that shit like twice. I had to run it back. Uh. You got bars. No, this nigga really rap. Get this nigga number. Huh, that's respect. And then the nigga didn't give me his phone and Cole gave me his phone. Hmm. And then asked for my phone and put his number in my phone. Yeah. And I texted him before he texted me. Oh, I got J. Cole number. Mind you, now I'm fanning out. You know how niggas say they don't fuck with a nigga. Yeah. Now I'm fanning out. <laughs> but he humbled my insecurity almost. Yeah, for sure, for sure. If I could describe it in that yeah. way. That's almost, uh, a, it, that's almost a blessing you for know, you. You know, he to, just corrected it. Yeah, absolutely. And as a real nigga, I stood on that. Yeah. So that's where my fandom really came from. I was happy. Because I felt like, oh no, I, 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 this person sees me. We just been now at the Drake shit. Everybody who doesn't know me is wondering how I'm in here with my father. Hmm. This, this nigga see me at the end of the night. Hmm. It's close to New Year's. Yeah. 
I love that. I, I got my daddy laid that nigga down in the back of his old Mercedes that I'm driving. Yeah. Started that bitch up and didn't want to start, nigga. I, I prayed to the Lord, turned the key, that bitch started up. And I text Jay Cole like, man, I'm on the way home. Good to meet you. This nigga texts me back faster than Drake texted me back. Mm. And Drake's the most famous person I ever met before him. And I look at them as equals at this time. Yeah. Nigga, what? 20 seconds. Oh, Cole, got you locked in. Three, four, five days later, I get an invitation. I'm um, about to leave to Arizona to do a hosting with my boy TJ Holmes at some club in Scottsdale. I'm scared to go to Scottsdale because that was a scammer mecca. I was one of the first ones in Arizona. Uh, I'm scared to go to Scottsdale to even host something. Yeah. I'm out there and we arranging to travel because Cole and them to pay for my flight to go do the Revenge of the Dreamers. Mm. So if niggas was really curious about why I pulled up to Atlanta when we was recording up there and I made the most songs and got on the most hooks on side with Buddy. Yeah. It's cause I, I felt like I had to. Yeah. I he mean He seen me. Right. It's like to get recognized by somebody like bros like shit, you had to come and put in work. Like <laughs> That's why I was doing what I was doing, cause he already validated that I was tight. Yeah. He helped move a, a chunk of the chip off my shoulder. Yeah. I hated that that just took fucking 40 minutes to say. Nah, man. But what was the studio sessions like, bro? Like, what, what was the energy like when y'all was working first together? First of all, fuck buddy. I love you, nigga, but fuck you. We was, when I was in Arizona, I'm calling the nigga. He talked about, yeah, calling them reached out to me too. They go fly me out. Uh, I, I, I'm. I'm finna bring some shrooms, I'ma do some shrooms, and I'ma only make songs with the niggas that I know. He being hella anti. Yeah. I'm like, all right, well that's the time I'm on. Cause at this time, I only met J. Cole once. I know Fly Rye, who helped pitch me to them, that was my A&R from a label situation we backed away from, but we fucked with him cause he was a, a nigga that was doing his thing. Yeah. Um, and I knew, I met Boz and, and Jit very briefly. Okay. I'm talking like an interaction. Yeah. They already knew who I was, so I knew we could be friends. Yeah. And I couldn't wait to like see them and tap in. Yeah. But I don't know none of these niggas. Word. The nigga I talked to the longest was J. Cole. Word, word. The most famous nigga who can't nobody text. Right, so how, right, right. The how most can I validate The most this? untouchable one mm -hmm. is the one You know that what you I'm saying? Most, yeah. So like, I ain't know what it was. I pull up. This nigga Matt in the hallway, he like, oh man, Guap, what's up, man? He talked about Sam, yeah, how was the ride? Is it good? The hotel was nice, blah, blah, blah. Buddy, run out the bathroom, zoom to the shit. He like, we over here. That's all he said to me. Hmm. This is the same nigga who just told me he was finna take it slow. Matt tell me as he walking me to the room, Buddy in, he like, this is a closet. They just turned it into a studio. It's, it's, it's room two, 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 mm. two, two now. But like, all like the niggas like y'all is, is uh, kicking it in there. This nigga Buddy did 13 songs today. I wanted to fire on him. <laughs> what happened to taking it slow with all right, the niggas right. home? Buddy come out before I walk in the room. He said, come to the bathroom with me. He said, look, uh, nobody here could probably rap better than you except for a few niggas. That's not me. It's a nigga named Smino here mm. and Jid. Mm. He was like, you gotta watch out for Boz and Kaz is super sneaky. Both of them niggas could do it if you lazy. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Boz know how to make songs better than you. I was like, okay, bet. He gave me the whole rundown. Yeah. So I said, bet. I'm finna go, I'm, finna... I'm about to kill everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did though. Yeah. But. Um, did you did it feel like competition in the studio like when when when, when cats was coming out from doing their verses? It was underlying competition. Yeah. Because people was just folding. By the time you got to a mic, it's fifty niggas in every room. Mm. By the time you get to a mic, it needs to be a room mood altering verse. Yeah. Or standout melody or hook, or niggas finna look at you like we know we ain't keeping that. And nobody wants to feel that way. Mm. So niggas just decided not to rap. That was the atmosphere. Wow. So you wasn't getting humiliated. You was getting sun in the shadows. Murky humiliation, huh. sticky one. 
standing on your talent because we all supposed to be hard, right? Right. We all rapidly rap. This all the boom bap, <laughs> blah diddy blah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, oh, I, I, no? mean I, I mean, I mean, because this is where, because <laughs> this is where, like, mm -hmm. people are being revered for mm -hmm. being lyricists yeah. and really spitting. You can really get some shit off, and they gonna listen. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and it's a lot of niggas that I fuck with still to, to this day. That was on songs that we took off. Yeah. But I was trying to curate the moment on some of the shit in the rooms. You know, I helped. I, I can't take accountability. I helped vouch to remove some of them niggas. Yeah. But listening back, especially to help develop my taste and my knowledge, mm -hmm. they mean not selfish to say, because they might feel they was robbed of a moment, but they did not perform. Mm. And as simple as that, that's what it was like there. Yeah. Perform or don't. Huh. Now, there were rumors that you were on Dreamville. Was that ever something that, that happened or was supposed to happen? I mean, yeah. of course, because of the affiliation, people think that. But was that ever, you know, uh, something that was, that was in the works or, or talked about? No, -uh. there was rumors that I was on Dreamville, right? But it's the same. It was, <laughs> it was also rumors like that I had to deal with Hennessy. People thought like Hennessy was sending me free cases. Huh. I got on a Zoom call uh, and the nigga was like, well, I mean, why would we have booked you for this? You already did it. You already booked yourself. Hmm. I went viral on my birthday saying I'm gonna drink Hennessy and catch all the Pokemon. Yeah. I said that. I told y'all to put this shit on stage. Huh. If they see this shit now, this is free. They didn't pay me for this. So I did this on my sword. own. So if it go viral, what the fuck they gonna enhance? What the fuck they gonna build a plan around? Yeah. I already did the moment on my own accord mm. and got them the free promo. That's what a lot of creators don't realize. Mm. I learned that the hard way because I was at the forefront mm. of internet influence. Yeah. And what the influencer is today. Yeah. I was an influencer by accident, nigga. That's what happened with Dreamville. I didn't need to sign to them. Yeah. They influenced me by accident. That's real. That's real. Cause, cause just people thinking that you signed to them, that in itself brings. Cole along. already gave the co-sign to me. Yeah. And I was the niggas that was boisterous enough to bring it up a lot. Yeah. A lot of people decided to be humble with their co-signs. I'm flashing minds to the public. Yeah. Look what I got. Look I, at this. I mean, bro, you you in rare. Y'all want some of this hand? You in rare air. You in rare air where you know you somebody who's been co-signed by Drake, co-signed by J Cole. You know Rick Ross. Rick Ross. Snoop Dogg. Snoop. Charlie Wilson. I mean, I've, I've seen Too Short. You Too know Short. What I'm like E Forty. E Forty. Like you've been embraced by the young and the you know and, and the legends. You know what I mean? Brother, I don't think I got that grabber. Yo, so oh, no, 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 these are the last nuggets I brought. I'm finna roll up the cliff <laughs> and this on your boy. I hate to not allow you to partake in the smoking of this weed with me, but I need this one, brother. Hey. It's certain shit that we got to gatekeep. Let's bring back gatekeeping. <laughs> I, I love bring back gatekeeping and bullying to some extent. Huh. We need that. It was a certain thing. We got too woke with gatekeeping and bullying, and yeah. now it's just non-existent. We need both of those. Huh. Let's bring back gatekeeping and bullying. Hey, and it's I have to gatekeep the spliff. I'm sorry if you feel bullied for that, but I need this one. Hey, so they, would you consider <laughs> would you consider the break dancer from Australia to be a gatekeeper? Did you did you hear about the, the break dance? So you want to know what's so crazy? You know, her and her husband ran like the organization that gave like the pass for people to go to the Olympics. That's how the bitch got up on there? Yeah. See, I knew that she was writing or like had journalism experience or like publishing things about her thoughts or whatever the fuck field this bitch is in, right? But I hate the Australian bitch. I hate her. 
Australian baby that break that was doing the break dancing at the Olympics. Australian baby that was doing the break dancing at the Olympics. This is a PSA for you. Fuck you, bitch. I love break dancing. As a nigga who used to read about the pillars of hip hop, who really study this shit, break dancing is something that I really fuck with. For sure. And I'm Filipino and black. I know more Filipino niggas who break dance yeah, than niggas sure. who break for dance. Sure. You feel me? Yeah. So I care about this a lot when it comes to the other pillars, Absolutely. especially when it comes to graffiti and shit. Yeah. For you to, <laughs> to do that shit for something that we made off our own pain and struggle, for your interest in it, I don't know, it felt like a, 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 a anthropologic study on human nature for you, whatever the fuck white privilege thought that you landed on, bitch. Fuck you, because now in 2028, we don't got break dancing. Anybody who did good and then the bitch who couldn't do good because it was your turn, could never get another accolade or never try. All these people who are doing them push-ups and all that damn calisthenics. All right. As many hours as an actual athlete dedicating their craft to that, that's attached to music, that's also attached to black people. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, you don't respect breakdancing. I'm living with a producer from Australia who I flew out from Melbourne, Australia, that has a breakdance history. And I didn't even know because before he had a chance to tell me that shit went viral, his pops had to get on the phone and bring it up to me. Wow. He was that ashamed. Wow. You have brought shame to even Australia. Wow. You fucked up representing your country, bitch. You're a failure. I don't give a fuck what article this leads you to write, if, this, if you ever even see this, but I hope you do and it hurts your feelings. I hate you. I will never be cool with you or anybody that you know. I hope whatever organization helped y'all get into the Olympics and that committee and have that say so is disbanded and y'all get defunded. Hmm. And if your whiteness defunded, I hope you wake up looking like a fucking aborigine in Australia and got to figure it out as a dark skinned bitch. Fuck you, bitch. All right, so jumping back into the music. Yes. <laughs> man, you, you've had a crazy Freestyle Friday series. You've been dropping freestyles. Um, man, the, the So Into You uh, the one with joint Tizo. with uh, yeah. Tizo. Yeah, like that one went viral. And I mean, you just had a slew of freestyles, you know what I'm saying, that's been going crazy. Uh, can you just talk about like what influenced you to even start doing that? Yeah, the big homie told me that I wasn't saucy as I think I was, and I didn't understand what that meant, but it realized that because of that J. Cole and all that shit earlier, I got too advanced. My cosign was too early. I hadn't been able to develop into that yet. And I'm from the Bay Area. Like I had never even talked to E40 in Too Short until I had already made so many waves on my own yeah. for when they felt like it was necessary to tap into me because we yeah. don't have infrastructure. So even if I'm viral and popping, what could they necessarily empower at that right. time? It was like too, uh, too culturally, like nationally influential. It wasn't necessarily regionally. So like, I, I didn't have uh, what none of these niggas had. Jid, Buddy, Smino, or any of my like close homies who I'm associated with. Yeah. They growing upings and help. I, I didn't, I didn't practice. Hmm. I learned from when he told me I wasn't as tight as I thought I was that I didn't practice. Word, so. so I started practicing. And then once I understood it, like rap, I just listened to old Jay-Z. Mace, Mac Dre, but re-listening to Mac Dre after listening to Jay-Z and then using Jay-Z as the rap blueprint for mm. the format. Yeah. And you know, I did Rock Him, Spice One, KRS One, Jada Kiss, um, Cam. Yeah. A lot of Cam too. Uh, Andre 3000 and the Outkast. I t all of this shit that I knew about and I knew I was wavy, even yeah. Max B, like I knew I was wavy, but I didn't really know why, yeah. specifically why I was wavy. I was just existing in the yeah. wave. Yeah. So as soon as I got aware of the wave, I started the freestyle series. Word, nah, that's what's up. And I mean, shit, you always been nice with words anyway, just from just the ism and just having a vernacular anyway. So it only makes sense to shit, put that <laughs> word play, you yeah. know what I mean, on the beats, you know? Yeah. Uh, what was it, the, um, 
Damn, it was a couple of dope ones. Uh, Want to be a baller freestyle. That, one was, that was one of my ones, yeah. too. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. That one went crazy. Um, and, and the one on the uh, Outcast was it the ele- elevators? The elevators, Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah. That one was, mm-hmm. that was one of my favorites. I was spe- I, I was telling some truth on there. Yeah, I was telling hella truth. Like honestly, I put money up against it. If we, I had to go like freestyle for freestyle for anybody who dropped freestyles this year, yeah, I would love to, cause I'm gonna eventually win. I don't really think people, like a lot of them, got accolades that I liked and. Yeah. Especially when I did shit from the OGs and then the OGs found it and gave me the cosign. Mm-hmm. You know, Cameron gave me the cosign on the flow, Bun B, yeah. Drake. Lingus was tapping in. Yeah. You know, it's ill too because, you know, like you said, you know, your goal was to be recognized as a rapper first mm-hmm. anyway. But then, you know, it didn't happen that way. You recognize more as a personality, but then you go into doing this freestyle uh, series. And now, yeah. you being recognized saying, as a rapper. Like the freestyle series, for real, brother, is me just saying, quit playing with me. Quit playing with me. Yeah. After I got the recognition from the freestyle series, that was another chip removed off my shoulder. Wow. Because I know what I did. Yeah. Before, like, I, I, I was too spread out. Mm. Now I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And was it by design that it seemed like you had taken a little break from officially releasing music and then we started seeing like all these freestyles, like what was that all by design, like how that went? Yeah, I was finding myself. I was depressed again, going through another breakup, got cheated on this time. I'm like, Phew. How did that happen? Right. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. that, and, and, that, and that fuck with your ego, because mm-hmm. you're like, wait a minute, like, I'm him. Like, wait, how you need somebody else to replace? Like, Come on, Pete. It only do a nigga dirty. Yeah. But it happens. That's Any real. nigga gonna get that bitch fucked. I mean, bro, I think that when it come to, as being a hustler, if you ain't never built it up, lost it, built it again, and then like shit, just on some player shit, if you ain't never been played, if you ain't never had your heart broken to understand how to come back, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. you gotta have those experiences to, you know, be a true hustler or to, to be a true P, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. that's exactly how it's supposed to go. Some niggas just get too jaded from that experience. Yeah. But that's how it went for me. You know, I live and I learn even in moments of great heartbreak or existentially extinguishing pain, huh. I still remain player. Yeah. It is the inevitable. Keeping a player is the best way to be. Keeping your composure, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's not, only one way to be, P. Real spell. It really is. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> For real, like you can't. I swear to God, and that's why I get to move in Hollywood how I move. Motherfuckers Mm -hmm. want tips on how to make it. Everybody like, oh, how do you get to do? You know, so many people. That's so random. Uh My life feel like a lie to most people. Yeah, I can't even express my day to people, my own family, because it just sound like I'm lying. Yeah, and because of ADHD, I used to lie about little Mm. shit. It was real to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to really believe it. That, so that, that shit only like further enforces it. So I don't often really get to say it. But it's rooted in just being player. Because I've been to this shit. I've been to everything that people say some bad shit going on in Hollywood. Yeah. And on the nights I was there, nigga, it was player. Hmm. I don't know. It was because I was there and I'm able to be around literal the people that is fighting cases right now mm. and change their behavior that's how strong the aura is p huh. huh yeah i can't control it yeah that's real. <laughs> like, you, you can't control i really it. can't yeah yeah it's unfortunate but it is how it is yeah now man we was uh we was talking about trump a little bit earlier and of course we got this uh presidential election coming up um I saw you uh, post something talking about Kamala Harris, and you said uh, Kamala Harris basically sent my mom to jail, changing the course of me and my siblings' lives. 
She never looked up from whatever she was reading. She never looked my mom's in the eyes. Basically, you speaking to Damn, when she Damn, that sounded like a bar. You just rapped that. Huh. I didn't even know that until yeah. you just said it. <laughs> and then, so basically, for the people that's watching, like when your mom's was sentenced to go to prison uh, by Kamala Harris, she didn't even have the respect to even look up to, to look her in her eye, to even have that dignity to, to sentence her, you know what I mean? And it's known that Kamala has been a part of, wrong, you know, wrongfully mm -hmm. sentencing or, or, or given, you know, too long of sentences for certain crimes and things like that when people go into jail. So. All I know is when my mama went down that time, And this wasn't my mama's longest stint, because her longest stint was in New York, in Buffalo, where she ended up in Buffalo, but she was in Rikers. My mama was in jail with Remy Ma in New York. Yeah. But I just remember from her telling me, and I got to deal with my little sister, who's so impressionable and already has separation anxiety because my mama left out the house on a flight and never came back. Hmm. So for her, me to have to deal with that again, all she, I remember from that moment is in court, it was a lady who was the boss of another lady hmm. that she just wanted to tell her story to because that lady will change the opinion of the lady that's been to sentence hmm. or punish bring down legal jurisdiction, bring down uh, legal force or sentencing via the jurisdiction, whatever, whatever the verbiage mm -hmm. is. And she told me that this lady never looked up from the paper. Mm. Then years later, when she became VP, me and my mama drunk, we driving. My mama trying to accept the fact that I got ADHD and she black. I got diagnosed as a kid. She never told me just because she told the doctors I wasn't retarded. Mm -hmm. We having that talk and we get in jail and trauma. I have started therapy at this time. So I'm talking to moms like about all this therapeutic shit. Yeah. And she bring up, she say, yeah, that's her. That's the lady mm. right there. So, of course, my opinion on Kamala Harris is absolutely jaded. Yeah. Because that's all I ever learned about her. Often, when you think about presidents, you only think about what you could do for you. That's why Trump could sway the black vote now, because so many people could either think about what the stimulus or PPP loan right. did for them or somebody they knew that they made jealous of them. Hmm. What I really want to say on the porch is we really got to check ourselves about excitement as black people and nostalgia. When PPP was going on and the stimulus package was going on, these are things that Trump just said okay to, but they took months from the politicians and the people in the other branches of the legal system to debate on, decide on, vote on, and then push forward for him to say yes. Trump did not give you niggas $1,200. Thank you. He did not do that. He did not let your partners run it up. He did not let your partners that was scammers he did, or was selling weed and we started dying because of the legalization and then they moved over to that check because we know how quarantine went. I know you niggas wanted the Frenchies. I know you niggas liked track hawks. Track hawks can't turn when they go fast. And none of you niggas can train Frenchies. They pissing all over your apartments that y'all can't even pay the rent on. All the niggas who got that money, even niggas who did it big, fuck the niggas who went to jail. The niggas who did it big is not doing it big because they was never supposed to have that money. As a nigga who find different ways to get money and then no niggas who get more money than me, all of them niggas who did it still got money hmm. because they always was supposed to have money because they niggas that get money. They learned how to get money. Trump 
taking credit for that blinded y'all to feel like Trump could help y'all as niggas in the hood get money. That's literally what it is. That's the psychology behind it. Wow. Please stop thinking that. Bro, I'll be telling people it that is not so that. much. Trump didn't do it. He took credit for it. Then everybody who want to vote for him now say, look at what Biden got us in. These is all Trump laws. Right, right, right. Do y'all know how presidents go? It roll over. If you fuck with a bad bitch, you got to deal with all the baggage from her ex. And then the next nigga got to deal with your baggage. That's how presidency work in America. And these niggas don't even do what you think they do, which is why I'm so negative against Kamala Harris because the first time I felt something knowing all of this from a presidential candidate outside of Obama giving me and my mom 300 more dollars for food stamps and all my crackhead cousins a phone so I can know they still alive. Mm. Kamala Harris sent my mama to jail and never looked at her. Mm. So that, that's my opinion. Yeah. And I know what I know. I'm not a stupid nigga. Yeah. No, that's real. That's my message yeah. to the people. No, it's good. You can still vote for Trump if you really wanted to. Yeah. I, I'm not even saying don't do that, but I'm saying be aware of why you're doing it. Because if you niggas knew what I knew, would you do it? I don't know. Yeah, so many people blinded by you hear so many people saying like, man, I'm voting for Trump because shit, he, he gave us that bread. He gave us that check. And it's like, man, y'all ain't bro, even making I'm sense. I'm letting you know, every nigga. That's the wool over the nigga, eyes. <laughs> there's viral tweets on black Twitter to this day like, oh, PP loans back? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to let you niggas do me like, yeah. I'm going to do it this time. Niggas really, it's some type of savior complex they have because they seen the finesse niggas was able to work. That was Congress. Hmm. That was the niggas that Obama and them let, that let that stupid shit slide yeah. to get you niggas juice. That was Obama and them. Hmm. <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? Right, right. Like, and well, that's, what's, that's who gave y'all the money. Trump just said, oh yeah. Right, sign it off when it was there, but it's like, nah. Cause that. it's the PPP side of that. And we, if we talk about business owners, and who own businesses in America? Mm -hmm. I don't have to say it out loud. Right. <clears throat> so, man, what would you say is one of the biggest life lessons that you learned? I have to say no. Mm. That's, a, that's, a, that's a huge one. I have to say no. My life is based around my happiness. Mm. And I need my happiness. Cause I'm crazy already. Hmm. I'm crazy already. I scare myself a lot because I identify with so many people who the public deem as demons and bad niggas. I see some of myself in those people yeah. just because of my origins, how I think, the coping mechanisms that I develop. So if I don't say no, I allow that energy to manifest uncontrollably. I need to say no. Yeah. I need to. No is the most powerful word in the uh, English language. Yes, sir. My man. Yes, sir. One of the most important. It's momentum stopping, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, man, let's talk about why you got all these white do-rags. Yeah. <laughs> with you on the porch, <laughs> man. <laughs> Come on, man. So you been? So I, I put up. I put up with Big Sarai. Uh, hello, <laughs> my bad. It was money on the phone. I put up with Big White do rags, cause I'm throwing a party called White Do Rags. It's something that existed before me, and then I came on because we like two sides of the same coin, you know, heads and tails. Yeah. And it's been great. We started the second leg in the South, the Atlanta party tonight. Okay. I don't know when this shit come out, but. The Atlanta party tonight. Yeah. And um, I got it. Because I'm on it now. My, uh, all of my network and these famous people always randomly pull up. Yeah. I got random niggas. I just got off the phone with Jed. He got his baby in the motherfucking thing. He's uh -huh. like, man, oh, I'm trying to figure what I'm doing now. Yeah. Key, I talk to Key. Like, I, I'm really in the background of a lot of shit. So, yeah. uh, in a lot of states, I could pull in the craziest people. Yeah. And because of the party and what they've already curated, which is my vibe, mm -hmm. 
that's why we match. Everybody dances. He's so wholesome. Niggas just got on white do rags left to right. Yeah. And the DJ going up. It's ill. Like I seen the pictures of it and some yeah. videos, and it's, it's like a, it's the every illest famous vibe. person that Everybody we get to slide got the white through. Do-rags. All of a sudden, just uh, wants to go in the crowd. Yeah. And, uh, and, and what other cities y'all hitting? Um, so we went from Chicago to Brooklyn to Philly to DC. Now we in Atlanta. Yeah. It was a little break in between because I'm finishing my album, so yeah. I had to do some shit. I was rapping with the game and fucking. Huh. Just, <laughs> I got a, oh, the deep tissue massage, brother. Huh. Now we on the second leg. We, we in right. Atlanta. <laughs> we finna go to Texas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then after Texas, it's Oakland. So I'm going back home to oh, the yeah, Bay. That's, we going to do up. it up. Then LA. Yeah. Then Portland. We still adding more dates in between. We, yeah. I, we might do some dates after Portland, might not. Yeah. But um, I know we kicking it up later on in the year around Art Basel. Yeah. And we going to hit Miami. And I love Miami. Huh. Miami like the Bay. It's too many cultures. Yeah. And yeah. good art. All, all, and good yeah. graffiti. Melting pot. Man, ooh. Yeah. And what can they expect when they pull up to the white do-rag party, bro? People dance. People dance at our huh. parties, dog. Okay, so they ain't just standing in the section, no, just, just looking. No, people dance at our okay. parties, dog. You pull up to white do-rag, you finna find at least, at least 10 to 15 bad bitches around the dance floor yeah. that are dancing. Eight of them might have do-rags yeah. on. Yeah. And if you find one bald-headed bitch, you know she thicked in the motherfucker. Huh. You, it's, you know, any girl work rocking the shortcut got ass like a motherfucker. Thick ass dad. That's who wear do-rags. That's who come to my parties. What, the, what do niggas want from me? Niggas always ask, where the hoes at? Where the hoes at? I'm throwing a fucking party. My bad, Hennessy. I got hundreds of do-rags on me. All you got to do is buy a ticket and get a fucking right do-rag and wear it around the thickest bitches that wear them. Huh. That sounds like a win-win to me. <laughs> I need to pull up. Forgive me. I done broke my character. West Oakland has showed his true face. Hey, hey, and hey. oftentimes it can be considered ugly. <laughs> Let me correct my demeanor. And hey, man, I saw you wore a 10-foot do-rag to the Grammys. Yeah, I went to the Grammys the day Kobe died. Huh. Kobe died on the day I went to the Grammys. I had to do press and interviews. My little brother, sick. Jigga Juice, love Kobe so much, he ready to cry. Mm. He about ready to cry. I gotta go to the Grammys. I got Filipino press with me. I'm, fuck, I'm Filipino and black. Yeah. I got the Filipino press with me. We doing a news run. Everybody in the Philippines finna see it. Mm. It's on TFC, the biggest channel up out there. If any, you know anybody Filipino, they watching that. Yeah. It's on the TV, P. It's a part of the program mm. daily. Period. Yeah. Folks in the studio. No, it just sounded like Jigga. I don't know where Jigga at. My phone and my, hold on. It sounded like my, I got a missed calls from Jigga Juice, three of them. I heard my little brother. Is that him in the hallway? Hello? You here? Uh, where you at? Hold on, bro. Can you hear me? Yeah, where you at? On my way to you. Oh, no, I thought I heard you in the hallway. I picked my phone up. I had three missed calls. I thought it was your voice. Yeah, well, I did call you like three times. No, I j I'm just seeing the shit now. I'm in the middle. I'm still on camera. Oh, shit, yeah, well, nigga, this nigga drew something on this <laughs> Oh, my God. How far are you, nigga? Nigga, I ain't gonna lie. You don't want to know that. It's a check. It's just, it's just around. Bye. <laughs> That's not my little brother. Nah, you all good. Nah, you all to the good. So, Hold on, wait, wait. Fire. No, no, no. So this my boy. I'm sorry I threw a, tinder, a temper tantrum, <laughs> but this is my boy. <laughs> We throw the white do-rag parties together. He just had a baby. 
I just want to mm-hmm. congratulate a black man, yeah, man. on my fatherhood. Shout out my lady too. We got we got white do rag and guap dad in the building. We here in Atlanta. Fuck me. Tonight. If we talk about your seed, P. We talking about that. If we talk about your mm. seed. This okay. nigga ain't slept. We took red eye flights here. I'm finishing my album. His baby was a week old yesterday. So we talking about eleven days. Bro. Eleven days out the coochie. <laughs> Fresh out. All the vaginal fluids and secretions is is gone. The the sack is popped. The baby is here. His mom is from DZ. Right. Hey, congrats on the baby. You know what I'm saying? One Craig Davis song, how old he is. Huh. Exactly. You want to make it to the next week, man. Shout out my lady. Shout out my baby. That's what's up. That's the shout out that I wanted. That's what I wanted. That's the energy. I'm blessed to be here with, with some really good folks, man, off the porch, man. Off of white you ragging. My lady, you know, thank you for the thank you for my son. That's the first thing. First and foremost, so you know, I know. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Come on. Come on. No, I got something in there, P. Look. Come on. That's hefty. Come on. Love you, baby. You already know. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Now tonight in Atlanta though. He got the the white bricks in the background, so. Yeah. yeah so, Come on. Come on now, now, go out. You, you, um, you heavily embrace um, your Filipino side um, as well as you know, ha- you know, showing Sorry, black pride and you know, what I'm saying all that. But can you just speak to how important it is for you to recognize and embrace your Filipino side as well as you do your black side? Yeah. Um, I think people especially because I physically present as black. It uh, throws people off when I try to explain that, the answer to that question, because for me, it's one thing. I love both of my grandmas so much that I could look, I could cry about how much. I love both of my grandmas, the Filipino one and the black one. I was in the garden in the dirt with the Filipino one and the black one. I learned how to cook certain things from the Filipino one and the black one. But I'm Filipino and black. So all of those things from both sides only end up in one place every time it's combined. Every time those atoms smash, it becomes an amalgamation of those two. So. I, it's it, for me. It's never a side thing mm. to pick a side is crazy mm. because biologically, the reason why I could present so black, I'm only 25 percent Filipino, but my household, my lifestyle, the way my parents was raised, is so Filipino. My household is Filipino. Mm. My church is all Filipino people. Mm -hmm. My grandmother speaks Tagalog to me. Mm. And she also speaks Ilocano. So I'm, she, she, my grandma speaks like nine Filipino dialect. Mm. Even the Muslim one. And we Catholic, she's a Catholic nun. So like, it's a mix of all of that. But just be a poor, but I'm one nigga. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Just one. So I don't have a side that I like more or that uh, I choose because I'm both of them and both of them broke. Mm, (laughs) Both of them is niggas. (laughs) Filipinos is the niggas of Asia. You can be hella dark if you go to the beach and see the Filipino niggas on the beach. Boy, they darker than you. And we in the South. Nigga, you got dreads. They that broke too. Mm. Seriously. I be changing my cousin's life, sending them fifty dollars a month. Wow. I found out my cousins was sw- kept switching Wi Fi and it only lasted so long in the summertime for them because they ain't have a roof. Wow. So when it rained, they need a whole new box. <laughs> Right. As soon as rainy season, now it's no Wi-Fi, um, and we wondering why we not. Yeah, able to communicate. We can't with talk them. to nobody. Yeah. Wow. 
How does that put things in perspective for you when you live the type of lifestyle that you live, have been blessed and afforded to live, yeah. but then you got family that still deal with, I mean, that's, that's, that's what we consider, that's third world yeah. country problems, you know what I mean? Honestly, my trauma is why I became a scammer because it gave me access to the feeling of survivor's guilt and imposter syndrome at the same time. Mm. I felt like this is my dream. This is what I deserve. I deserve good things. I deserve steak. I deserve truffle butter. I deserve it. I deserve to try if I like caviar or not. I went to private school. Hmm. Them niggas ain't. <laughs> Nigga, when I had these, I had private school rich kids taking BART from San Francisco to Oakland to do spend a night on the type on the rotation month when it's time to come to my house yeah and my pops need to serve a nigga at the bar station that's the train in the bay yeah the bar station my pops got to serve a nigga at the bar station huh. before i go home just so he could get the food that i told him we was gonna have wow you know yeah yeah really out the mud because he before that i wasn't gonna have i would already have my disappointment um speech ready mm -hmm. like oh man my pie he had to he had to do something yeah how much i just, let's put some cinnamon and some sugar or some toast yeah you know yeah like that's the type of equipment a nigga was carrying in the in the mix of all that mm. Why'd you say that it was, uh, it's been difficult for you to properly uh, be able to speak out like, again, like about the discrimination against Asians? Because I'm from Oakland and I knew one of my big brothers, a nigga who I call big brother, I could just say his name because they, they it's not in the case, P3. Mm -hmm. He downed he, he got caught for downing the bitch and they wanted to say he did it. I say he downed it because that's how he talked to me with it. But he, I know he did that as some big brother to little brother shit. There's no evidence. Yeah. But he, he's fighting that case. And from the severity of it, especially because because I know a lot. A lot of people don't know how much I know. Hmm. I was on text with Tori when that other shit happened. Huh. I'm so close to Drake. I know everybody signed the TDE. Yeah. I'm always the middleman. It's some details you niggas will never get out of me. Nobody will ever. Huh. But with that specific one, It was so high up on the news mm -hmm. that we all knew as soon as like certain articles post, that person is going to get a certain type of sentence. Because especially learning from Hollywood, entities in business and white money mm -hmm. don't like to look stupid. Hmm. Right, yeah, for sure. So somebody has to pay for something and that's how I realized a lot of uh, black sentencing gets rolled over onto, mm. is people paying for something because we commit the most crimes for how our neighborhoods were set up. Right. Um, that's the talk that I'm having with him. It wasn't like, hey, I'm guilty of this, and right. I did this thing. It's, you see what's going on. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm in, yeah. and this is how it's happening. Yeah. Oh, that killed me. And that was connected to the Asian hate movement. Mm -hmm. And then it came out on the press that her, wife, her husband, the lady that died, her husband might have hired a hitman. And her husband is Asian, brother. Wow. So this Asian hate crime mm -hmm. got rolled over <laughs> from Asian on Asian hate. But people don't talk about Asian on Asian hate. Mm. But you know who could talk about Asian on Asian hate? Your boy. Uh. 
because as a black and Asian nigga who had to absorb this and didn't know anybody that I knew was involved in that, is telling all my little brothers, and we all feel the same way about my Asian grandma, yeah. nigga. We ready? To, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to. I'll kill a nigga in broad daylight over my grandma. Hmm. Broad daylight, sacrifice my whole life, Grammy nominations, everything I ever worked towards. Everybody who ever believed in me, I will disappoint them to protect my grandma. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how much you like me, how much I won you over. Hmm. I don't give a fuck. That's my perspective, but I also feel that way about both grandmas. Hmm. Because I could give you that whole speech about Sister P, Patricia Wright. I love her with all my heart so much. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> like, I love, you know? Yeah. Because it's back to my thing, I exist as one. Hmm. So when it came to Asian hate, it's difficult for me to talk about because I'm both things. And then the thing that they're trying to say is attacking the Asians is me. Mm. It's niggas. Mm. I'm niggas. Mm. If you're looking for niggas, it's me. Yeah. I'm the niggas that you're looking for. Yeah. Congratulations, you found niggas. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So how, how am I supposed to feel? I'm jaded on both sides. Right, right, right. I don't want you to disrespect black people. You better not say nothing to black Right. You know? Right, for sure. For sure. And I mean, shit, the first, I mean, the first man comes from, you know, that, you know, the Asiatic black man. So, I mean, you You're looking at him, B. Yeah. I am the Asiatic black man. I'm the Dr. Umar nightmare. Huh. <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> Cause I'm just as rad. I'm from Oakland, P. I'm just as radical as Umar. Yeah. I'm just, he fuck white bitches off camera. I fucked him because I was on tour. Hey. I don't fuck white bitches consciously anymore huh. because I'm also having. I'm pretty sure Dr. Umar lives in his car. And you know what? That's the Hennessy. See, Hennessy wanted me to be more aggressive. I don't want to say no disrespect to Dr. Umar. I actually love and respect yeah, yeah, his opinion. Cut, cut for real. I love Umar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure, for sure, but, for sure. But, you know, I, I, it's Leo season. Yeah. <laughs> I started, I needed to be boisterous for yeah. a second. But his intellect and his knowledge goes far beyond mine in a lot of categories, and mm -hmm. I can't disrespect that. Mm -hmm. Some of his opinions I do feel are a bit outdated and unconventional. But I'm a fan of the unconventional, which is what makes me want to circle back right. to that. Right. Yep. So that's why. All right, word, word. All right, um, your song Black Iverson was featured on NBA 2K23. Was that? I'm in the game. Was that? If you play NBA 2K23, Fuck the playlist, nigga. You was in the lobby. You heard my song. It's Black Iverson. And a lot of you niggas don't know why. It's because Post Malone is white. And y'all see the discourse about Post Malone now. Mind you, I know Post Malone team. And I never really even met him like that. Well, like we've crossed paths and shook hands a couple times. And I, it's literally no disrespect because I actually fuck with him. I know people that he did take care of. I know people that got plaques and studios because of him. I fuck with Post. His journey is also true. But I feel like the internet is trying to weaponize that against him instead of just acknowledging his trauma that he had to deal with as a result of that privilege. Yeah. Because he's coming to us with his truth from the privilege, but we so jaded because we know it's from privilege. Right. But I, I'm not demonizing Post, yeah. but yeah, I just had to say that. Right. No, I could dig it. I could <laughs> dig it. Because for real, people don't understand nuance. I live in the gray area. I'm in the nuance. Huh. I'm in between. What does that mean? What does that mean? I travel on the multiverse, P. I, I was just in Decatur in a random parking lot in the most ghetto shit. Every nigga walking around me, I could see the gun that they have in the sweatpants because you niggas still wear skinny jeans in the South. <laughs> Everything's still skinny down here. I see the gun, but nigga, I'm from Oakland. Hmm. If any of my brothers would have been with me, we cool. I already didn't lock my jewelry in the safe in the hotel. And I changed the password twice hmm. because I know the brand of the safe. Yeah. So they finna have to do a hard reset when I get out of that bitch because I did something that don't follow the rules of the thing. Yeah. Nigga, my shit cool. I'm cool with, I just left New York, nigga, I was in Harlem in the trenches. 
in the trenches in Harlem, just absorbing. I'm buying fruit from the fruit niggas. I'm going to the corner store. I'm customizing my chopped cheese, nigga. I'm getting the cocoa bread with the butter on both sides, like it's fucking Cane's chicken. Yeah. But we in New York, huh. and I, if I don't give a fuck if I want pastrami and mustard on that bitch, I'ma do what I want. Yeah. Cause I'm good. I don't bring no bullshit energy. If any nigga, t- I don't get. It's niggas that have been in different hoods that have been impressing me. I'm talking pistols to my stomach, nigga, trying to, sh- that I feel like will really kill me right there. That just got to holler at me right then, and it was cool. Yeah. You ever meet an anime protagonist and they say he make friends with everybody that's his power? That's me, nigga. Hmm. It's really hard not to fuck with me because I don't got no, all my flaws come from shit that I seen. Mm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So that's me traveling, and that's how, I, that's my mindset with it. Yeah. Word. Man, what else you working on, man? What else you got coming up? I'm finishing my album right now. I just did a whole bunch of shit. We in Atlanta. I just did a whole bunch of shit with Honorable C Note. Okay. He ain't even heard it till I sent him all the sessions. Yeah. This nigga yeah. made just beats, just drums for me. I sent him three of them back couple days later he just heard him not too long ago we mixed them now I'm finna I didn't already wrapped one of those in New York yeah <laughs> I already knew it was good before you heard it. so I'm finna drop a whole bunch more freestyles just on other people's platforms I got it on the radar freestyle I'm finna mm. drop I had to ask my manager shit if I needed a verse prepared for today or multiple, because I, I, nigga, I would have rapped today if yeah. y'all would have told me to oh, do it. Well, nigga, I'm so on go. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I understand the formula right now. So it's not hard to impress. Yeah. I'm already impressive as long as I pour myself into it. Mm. Now it's unique. Now I'm innovative. Mm. Nigga, I'm Margella motherfucking MacGyver at this mm. point. Don't matter to me. Yeah. Can you hear me that hand? <laughs> and uh, you got any shout outs you want to give? Yes. Shout out to Oakland, California. Shout out to my mama. Shout out to my grandma. Shout out to all my aunties. Specifically my TT Diane. I'ma send you this clip because I've been thinking about you. And TT April, because you said it, I don't call you. Um, shout out to my nigga Ferg. Shout out to the seed he just brought forth for manifest life unto this universe via a woman that he loves dearly. Shout out to black men who got babies. My little brother just had a baby. I'm an uncle now. I'm a oh, new man. uncle. Come on, I'm, I'm really Uncle Guap now. Huh. And, and my That's extended brothers does. have had babies before that I didn't, you know, gave them money. I didn't bought strollers. I, I'm a baby shower king for real. Like, I. <laughs> I be taking care of my nigga. Yeah, bro, nah, that's what's God. up. That's what's up. I'm a baby shower Espe- champion. Especially like when we see black men like taking care of their kids and pushing to do that. Like yes. we gotta support our brothers. You it's know. Important for us to bring in that new age. Mm-hmm. We saw there's someone who brought us all in. Guap will tell you. Like, yeah. yeah. Oakland and DC have like a crazy history of like North Face's first down. Yeah. Man, shout All out to the shit. tour. Everything we've been doing on this white Durac tour been reminding me of the pimping. Cause we got to go to DC yeah. and every parking lot and all the old school shit. They OGs got the same car as my uncles. All the way in DC. It was a whole Filipino community in DC. Yeah, bro, the black the people in DC, the Africans, these niggas got the same cars just regular niggas got in the town. You yeah. feel me? I'm talking about old school. I'm talking about I Rocks. Hmm. Like the rent, the, you know what I'm saying? Shit that niggas really, we like specific shit. Niggas yeah. in like a $7,000 car and make it 13, 18, 21. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we, we like, we got dirt bike culture. So Philly was great. Yeah. We got my little brother ride dirt bike. Mm. I'm trying to get him. I'm trying to change monster energy to sponsor hood niggas just so they could go out with my little brother and them because that's the clips mm. that the niggas is posting from California yeah. outside of the East Coast. Like the, they got their own thing. They obviously made the wave but like nigga it's niggas shutting down the bay bridge on right. dirt bikes that's who my little brothers and them be with so shout out to y'all niggas too who else i gotta give a shout out to nigga shout out to my uh seventh grade teacher miss Oli, because you told me i was gonna be famous you didn't notorious big me a lot of niggas be getting notorious big or lying about it i didn't get it because these niggas knew as soon as i figured out i would be that nigga Talk and guess who got the figure yeah yeah uh-huh shout that's out to real. my mom and my daddy Shout out to all my little brothers. If you want to know who I was on FaceTime with, his name is Jigga Juice. 
I tag him in all the shit. It's Jig Juice 1000. He amazing rapper. He my little brother. And it, he, <laughs> it's two of us. It's actually six of us, but only two of us decided to do music. Hmm. But like, come on, man. Um, and also, shout out to um, uh, the platform. We off the porch. Wow. Y'all don't know. Yes, uh, I got the house of my granny house that I grew up in. This long ass story, talking to y'all for these hours. I, and y'all gave me liquor, so I got to ramble. ADHD to kick in. <laughs> I've been supposed to leave. I got bitches in the duffel bag like, what the fuck is going on? Are we leaking or not? Fuck them bitches, nigga. Shout out to the porch. I got the stoop. I'm a real stoop kid. I got a documentary on Amazon Prime. That nigga I done sold to Sony. I'm developing a show, nigga. Niggas don't got show deals. They don't. I'm developing a whole show. Shout out Sony, nigga. And Amazon too. Jeff Bezos and them niggas. Huh. Nigga. They, they helped me sell the, the story about the original Porsche that I jumped off. If you really go to West Oakland, I don't give a fuck what hood nigga you ask, what street nigga you ask, you really go to West Oakland where I'm from and ask somebody about me, they gonna show you the house, this one right here, and they gonna tell you something about somebody. And if it's not me, it's gonna be about one of my little brothers who you best not play with. You best not. You best not. Huh. I'm really off a of porch, and I'm doing square shit, baby. Off I like anime. I eat sushi. I'm blazing. <laughs> I'm throwing a party where do rags is a theme. That's all you gotta do. You, you can still be from the mud. You can still be off the fucking porch and do something, Come nigga. Come on, man. Real spill. That's what it's about. I ain't even pay for the Hennessy. We just figured out what liquor was left over in Come here on. because niggas wanna do nice things for good niggas. Good man. niggas can't win, man. Real nice guys do real. finish last. I'm real. not a nice guy. I'm a good guy. Uh, real I'm spill. a good nigga. Guap Dad 4000, the Ferragamo Falcon. Man, appreciate you jumping off the porch with us.